Hello, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates. Uh, it's been a while since I've made a video. I've learned a few things since then. The topic of my video today is Narcissistic Abuse Syndrome. I didn't know what this was a couple weeks ago. Many of you have been following my journey this past seven and a half months where I sustained complicated PTSD beginning on April the 26th of this year when my fiance of a six, six and a half years showed me a whole nother side of herself that I'd never seen and it shattered me into a million pieces. A billion pieces. Y'all have seen me on this uh, video channel. Uh, I lost 53 pounds. I, uh, I probably sounded sort of wimpy and sort of passive. Um, there's this old saying, the truth will set you free. And I've read a lot of books. I, I think I've read, listened to, I listened to them. I've probably listened to 25 or 30 books, and, and those, some, many of them I listened to over, I probably have listened to them a hundred times, a uh, hundred books total, if you count each book separately, that, that I did multiple times. Um, and nobody mentioned narcissistic abuse syndrome. But I finally have figured some things out, thank God. And I just want to share my heart. There's many of you out there who have bought my video and bought my books and you are my people. You are people that have been through PTSD and abandonment and trauma. Uh, boy, do I have some things to share with you. And maybe it's stuff you already knew, some of you, but it's been stunning. Um, part of the pain of narcissistic abuse syndrome is not knowing what the hell just happened to you because nobody I talked with knew what it was. It wasn't just an affair. That's for sure. It was many, 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 many times more serious than an affair. So your mind is working and churning and you're obsessing and you have a cognitive dissonance, which is one of the symptoms of narcissistic abuse syndrome. Um, so I, di I didn't know what to call what I had. I just knew that it was way bigger, frankly, than, than anything I've ever worked with being the therapist. And it was so much more painful than anything uh, that I'd experienced in my life. I, I, I went to six different therapists and a, a really great treatment center. Nobody mentioned narcissistic abuse syndrome. I read a book, however, and it's called Psychopath Free by a man named Jackson McKenzie. And I'll be forever in this man's debt. It described... Uh, I've read, listened to a lot of books on narcissism, but this book was written just by a dude, wasn't a therapist, wasn't a PhD, just a guy who went through a relationship and got his heart crushed by a sociopath, by a narcissist, by a borderline, whatever you want to call it, antisocial personality disorder, a bad actor. And he just wrote it, and he wrote it as, this is my experience. And about, I don't know, over and over and over and over again, I kept going, that's me. That's me. That's exactly how I felt. I'm going to go over some of those in just a little bit here. And it gave me validation. When you go through getting eaten alive, by a narcissist, by a sociopath, by a psychopath, by a borderline, um, by somebody with antisocial personality. Pardon my language, it is the ultimate mind fuck. And, and you don't know which end is up. You don't know who you are. One of the things he mentions in the books, he calls it, 
identity erosion. Oh my God. That's exactly what I've been struggling with for seven and a half months. My identity has been eroded. So if I would have been told about narcissistic abuse syndrome a year ago, I'd have been against it because it sounds a little victimy from a distance. But trust me, what I'm talking about is not victimy. One of the proponents of this uh, uh, diagnosis, if you will, is a woman named Melanie Tanya Evans, and she emphasizes over and over, hey, you ain't a victim. You needed to go through this. This seems like a curse, but it's a blessing. It's a massive blessing. It's one of the biggest blessings of your life. And because, because it's going to cut you open and help you to heal. So, of course, Mark Smith doesn't believe that, that he or anybody else gets victimized in relationship. That's true. But some of us need the shit kicked out of us by bad actors. And I was one of them because of our family of origin issues. My mother was this person all over again. This person was my mother all over again. They're identical. They're liars, cheaters, manipulators, ragers. And um, so uh, this has obviously uh, changed my life a great deal. I'm walking around with a little bit of swagger for the first time in seven and a half months. Thank goodness. So this man described my experience. I'm surprised I'm not crying because I am so grateful for knowing what the hell just happened to me because I didn't have a place to file it. And I kept going, well, maybe it was maybe I was too workaholic or maybe it was me or maybe I, I had too much PTSD and I did have too much PTSD afterward but that didn't cause this so here's some of the things that that he lists um, as people who go through this syndrome is uh, somebody you, you basically it ain't love it's a con woman and boy I, I don't want to admit that to myself that I was involved with a con woman for six and a half years it's the truth um, so so these people and don't have to be a woman and probably more of them are men they're, they're parasitic financially um another thing he described that i resonated with he says he had pain in his chest and he, he said many 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 of the people he knew who went through this walked around with pain in their chest um massive fatigue fatigue you can't even put into words something that he calls the grand finale um, narcissists like this uh, sociopaths they don't just break up with you they have a grand finale they do it with finesse and wickedness and meanness and in the most painful insensitive way possible so that that was my experience um, I, I, I was broken up with viciously, viciously, couldn't be more vicious. Next thing that I resonated with is uh, sociopaths triangle in third parties. And of course, she had triangled in her lover, you know, the whole time. But uh, and he says, sociopaths don't get better. They don't get better. They go to treatment. They go to therapy. They use it to get worse. And this woman went off to a treatment center and she conned the hell out of that treatment center. That treatment center didn't have any clue what they were doing. And they triangled her in and uh, she triangled them in and that empowered her. And uh, that's what they do. They, they, they gain power by triangling in people and they enjoy hurting you. They enjoy hurting you. You know, I was an awfully innocent, naive fellow before this happened, obviously. And I just didn't think the world was filled with such evil. But there's people out there that are dangerous. 
And a lot of you already knew that. I didn't know that. They enjoy seeing you self-destruct. He talks about there's a mask and sometimes the mask slips. And that's what happened the last couple of months. This woman wrote out a confession of all the horrific, horrific sexual things she had done. And she handed me the keys to her car, you know, which was my car, handed me her cell phone and her whole demeanor, how she held her. She was another person. It's like the person I had already knew, always known, sweet country girl. That wasn't her. And this woman, it's like she held herself different. Her voice was different. That's who she really was. Um, he talks about a discarding process. You know, you're playing cards and you have to discard. And there is a process where they are grooming your replacement and then they discard you in the most, most ruthless, painful way possible. Does this resonate with anybody out there? I'm telling you what. Um, they see breaking up as an opportunity to enjoy your self-destruction. Uh, the word unhinged. I, I've been using that word for seven and a half months, and this guy just keeps talking about you're unhinged. You're unhinged. I tell you what, I was unhinged. Um, and then I went to some therapist, and frankly, some of them were pretty blaming of me. They didn't have a clue who she was. They hadn't met her, and they were trying to be good therapists and get me to work on the only thing I could control is me. But it's so redemptive and so affirming. You can't fix something till you know what it is. Another thing Jackson McKenzie mentioned was your body will be very fragile. I think you guys saw me on these videos. It looked like a, the wind could blow me off the chair. I was so fragile. Uh, one of my favorites is, is, is uh, called Flying Monkeys. And, you know, from the Wizard of Oz, flying monkeys is, is the person's posse. They will gather their family, their friends, their lover, even their treatment center and their therapist, and a bunch of scary-ass flying monkeys coming at you. Uh, and that's, that's what it felt like. It's like I'd talk with members of her family, and they were filled with this venom and anger. Where does it come It came from her. Um a lack of remorse there was no remorse um, so I want to point you to some resources um, I'll be back uh, making more videos about this and it's gonna sort of slant how I write this book that I'm in the middle of let me tell you um, Melanie Tanya Evans brilliant lady from Australia and she has some some uh, audio things you can purchase for a reasonable price that can help you dig in and do the work. The work that she talks about sounds very familiar to the internal family systems stuff. Everything that I've read and learned, it all points back to healing your wounds from your childhood and learning how to love yourself. That's been consistent. Ross Rosenberg has some excellent material on recovery from codependency as the codependent inter interacts with the narcissist. I don't know this woman's last name. Her name is Dana, her first name, and she is with Narcissistic Support on YouTube. Narcissistic Support, she's excellent. There are forums you can go to psychopathfree.com and there's forums where there's I mean, it looks like thousands and thousands and thousands of people that offer a, as support for each other. It's, it's amazing. So anyway, there's more to come with this. But the truth will set you free. Um, uh, if you're particularly destroyed in a relationship where you're barely functioning, where you've been suicidal, where your heart is just ripped apart, where uh, another thing that I resonated with is they're so good at the mind fuck that you're the one who looks crazy. 
I've looked really crazy for the seven, last seven and a half months, and I'm not. I'm not crazy. I was, I, I was, I was oblivious. I was counterdependent. I had a little bit of, you know, narcissistic spectrum myself, of course, but I wasn't a bad actor and I wasn't crazy. So this concept, Google it, narcissistic abuse syndrome, and you'll find a lot of excellent videos. You know what? Today, today's day and age. I get more help off of YouTube than I do paying 150 bucks an hour sometimes paying for a therapist. And these are good therapists, they're well-meaning, but unless you're focused in like a laser on exactly what you have, and you know who helps me the most? It's not therapists, it's not PhDs, it's not experts, it's not people that write books. It's people that have been through it. That's the, the help. And that's, Jackson wrote a book, but he went through it, and he lived it, and he has a great deal of heart and compassion. So I'm grateful for all I've learned about PTSD and uh, about healing your inner child and everything I learned at the treatment center, but bang, the light's on now. Uh, I know, and and if if this is what you've gone through, uh, uh, you know, watch some of those videos and I'll have some further information for you down the road, but it lessens your shame. It gives you some people and it's the truth. There are dangerous people out there. You collaborated with them. You invited them into your life, but the reason it hurts so bad physically, the reason it hurts so bad financially, the reason it hurts so bad emotionally, the reason it hurts so bad spiritually is you've been through devastation like not everybody goes through. Uh, in this book, Jackson McKenzie estimates that as high as 15% of the population might fit the cluster B, the borderlines, the antisocial, the narcissist the sociopathic people that might be a little high, but there's a lot of people out there. And uh, so my apologies for not knowing more about this, this issue. I've been talking around it for years, but I get it now. And just understanding what you have, I mean, it makes a world of, I feel so much better because I know this is what happened and it makes sense and it actually aids me in my letting go and my forgiving this woman because you know I recruited her to be my narcissistic abuser anyway visit our site familytreecounseling.com I got some good books on there you can buy join our uh, our YouTube channel subscribe to it family tree counseling and stay tuned I got lots to share